Salam. On this United in Christ, picking up again, coming out of Deuteronomy 32. Beautiful chapter. Hopefully, I'll be able to run through the whole chapter. Picking up. The 13th verse. Read, out, read 11 and 12, because that's where, that's where we left off last time. Deuteronomy 32 and 11. As an eagle, as an eagle stands up her nest, fluttering over her young, spreading her broad and wings, taking them, and bearing them on her wings. Right. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange power with him. Yeah, straight up and down. It's talking about the protection that the Lord He gives His chosen. This is talking about the covering, just like how the eagle He covers His young with His wing. The Lord God's protected just like that. And it goes on to say that the Lord led us, but the Lord led us alone. There wasn't no other power. It was just the Lord. We wasn't into all this religion and all this idolatry. It was only the Lord that was leading us, that got us, that got us so that we're still here today. We're in a jacked up condition, but we're still here. You know what I mean? The scriptures are saying a dead, a dead lion, a living dog is better than a dead lion. And that's the situation where we at right now, because we're a lion, but we forgot who we are. And now we in we in America with the dogs. I read on that. <laughs> Deuteronomy 32, 13. He made him ride on high places of the earth, right? That he might eat the increase of the fields, right? And he made him to suck honey out of a rock, yeah. oil out of a flinty rock. Yeah, that's how we had it. The Lord had us pumped up where we was, we was in our land, we was walking righteously, and the land was giving us increased source. We was in the land flowing with milk and honey. The land was pumping out corn, it was pumping out oil, it was pumping out wine. Everything we need was coming out of the earth. And that's how you would judge wealthiness back then. A brother or sister was rich or wealthy because of the substance he had. He might have had, he might have bars filled with wheat, flour, orange, co corn. He had wine. You know what I mean? He had honey. He had sheep. He had cattle. Back in the days, this is how you would say a man was doing good or he was rich. Nowadays, it's about paper money. How a man say he's rich or not? If he got paper money, that the Fed, the federal government dictate what that paper is, is worth. But back then, we was living off the land. And the Lord pumped up the land because it's for the people, so we, we be supplied. And I always say that. We so used to go to the supermarket and all these things that we don't see the work that goes into even just the food. The corn, the oil, the wine, all this stuff is coming out the earth. It's the Lord that pumped it up. We, we don't see the work. We don't see the work, so we forget the Creator and whose hand is feeding us. So we forget all about that, right? You know, 314. Deuteronomy 33, 32, 14. Butter of kind and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the bread of Bashan, Bashan and right. goats with the fat of the kidney of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. Yeah, man, we had it good. We was living up the land, the land was pumping up the land and we was living good. When you get Genesis 26 and 12, I want to 12 and 16. Over here, let me get 1 Kings. Let me get uh, 1 Kings 4, 20 to 28. Because we forget in the hand that feed us, man. To me, it's a, it's a small miracle, the fact that our food come out the dirt. It comes out the ground. You know what I mean? To me, that's a miracle in itself. And as long as this earth been in existence, every year, food comes out the earth every single year. It never stopped. The Lord never, the Lord never fell. He's doing his side, but we're not playing our role. I agree with you, God. Genesis 26 and 12. And Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. Right? And the Lord blessed him. Uh huh. And the man waxed great. He waxed great. He was doing good. He was rich. Just like I said, it wasn't according to paper money or according to things of that. He was rich and wealthy because he had sheep, he had cattle, he had corn, he had food growing out the, out the earth. Right? Right. 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 And that man waxed great. Right? And went forward and grew until he became very great, right? And he had possession of flocks, flocks. and possession right. of herds, 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 right? And great store of servants. And he had servants. And the Philistines envied him. Yeah, and the Philistines envied him, right? Because he was doing so good, because he was prospering, right? All these brothers and sisters that got followed the Lord, or forefathers, they did good. Abraham, same thing. He was he was a wealthy man. He was considered rich in his days. Isaac, he was rich in his days. Jacob. He was rich in his days. How was he rich? It wasn't through paper money. It's because the Lord gave him cattle, gave him sheep. The brother, he didn't have no warmth for food, clothing, or none of these things. The brother was taken care of. He, he waxed great. 
He was so great that the Philistines envied him like we just read, right? Be what you got, huh? First Kings 4 and 20. Judah and Israel were many. Right. That's the sand which is by the sea and multitudes. Uh -huh. Eating and drinking and making merry. Yeah, man. This is we, we was doing good. We didn't have no famines. We didn't have no shortage of food. We was doing good. The Lord was pumping us up. Read on. We was waxing great. And Solomon reigned over the kingdom from the river to the land of yeah. the Philistines. Yeah, let's talk about the, 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 the makeup of Solomon's kingdom. It was, it was great. It said it ran for, for so long. Read it again. And Solomon reigned from the all kingdoms from the river and to the land of the Philistines. Yeah, he had the whole middle. When Solomon was in his reign, he had the whole Middle East paying homage to him. They was, they was all paying tax to that brother because he was, he was running it, right? Read on. And unto the border of Egypt, they brought presents, right? They served Solomon all the days of his life. Yeah, the brother, he waxed great. The brother was rich in his day and in his time. Read on. And Solomon provision for one day with mm -hmm. 30 measures of fine flour. One day, this brother had 30 measures of fine flour. Three score measures of meal. Right. 10 fat oxen. Oxen. 20 oxen right. out of the pasture. Uh-huh. And 100 sheep. This brother was limping. He didn't have no water, food, or any of these things. Right? Read on. Besides heart, follow him and fat Right? He had dominion over all the rain uh -huh. on, his, on this side of the river. From Tanet. Tifsha unto Asad, over all the kingdoms on this side, the river. Right. He had peace on all sides round about him. The brother had peace. The brother, he had wealth and he had peace because he was locked into the Lord and the Lord was pumping him up. He made him wax fat. The brother was rich in his day and in his time. Not rich according to how we call rich today, but rich through the Lord, right? Read on. For so he had dominion over all the region of this, of this side, from the river of Tifsha, Tifsha, even to Aza, right. over all the kings on this side of the river. Right. He had peace on all sides round about him. And Judah and Israel dwelt safely, every man under his vine. Yeah, everybody was at peace, everybody was in their own land, and the Lord was provided for us, right? We didn't have to go to go to nobody for, for anything. We was self-serving, sufficient, wealthy, right? Read on. And under his fig tree, from Dan even to Beersheba, right. all the days of Solomon. Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses. He had 40,000 horses. The brother had 40,000 horses. Read on. For, for his chariot, for his chariot, 12,000 horsemen. The 12,000 men taking care of his horses and riding his horses for him. Right? Read on. And those officers provided victuals for King Solomon. And they had their officers to provide food and bring things to his table. Right? Read on. For all that came with King Solomon's table. Every man and his monk lacked nothing. They lacked nothing. They were taken care of. They were wealthy in their days, in their time, right? Let me get over here. Let me get Ezekiel 20, 4 to 7. Let me get Deuteronomy 11, 8 to 17. I'm just showing you that how the righteous were taken. Ezekiel 20 and 4. Right? Will thou judge them, son of man? Uh -huh. Will thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers. Stop. And a lot of people say that about us. They say that we're judging people, like we're pointing our finger here and there. But that's not the case. The fact of the matter is the Lord said we're supposed to show our people where we're off at, where our sins is, and show our, 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 our nation the transgressions. And that's what we're doing. We're doing according to what the Lord told us to do. It's not like we're pointing fingers at people. We're just showing you where you're off at, right? Read on. Ezekiel 20 and 5. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord power, In the day when I choose Israel, right. and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, right and made myself uh -huh. known unto them in the land of Egypt, uh -huh. when I lifted up mine hand unto them. Stop. Now that's major. Let me get Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Let me also get Baruch, 35 to 37. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Get Baruch, 5 and 37. So that scripture is big right there, because it's saying that, the, the, that Israel is the Lord's chosen. And it said that he made himself known unto Israel. And that's big because no other nation has that where the Lord called them his chosen people and he said he made themselves known unto them. So that's a different a different relationship that the Lord has with the nation of Israel than with any other nation on the earth. Read what you got, out. Ezekiel 20 and 5. 
and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Power, in the day when I choose Israel, and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up my hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your power. Yeah, man, so the Lord, he chose us, and he made himself known unto us, right? We, we, what you got? I said, Psalms. Psalms 119. I mean, 147 19. He showed his words unto Jacob, right? his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Uh -huh. He had not dealt so with any other with any nation. So that's big. He hasn't dealt so with any other nation except for Jacob. And who's Jacob? We got here, we got the sign right here. These are the descendants of Jacob. The 12 children that Jacob had, right? Judah being the so-called Negroes who were brought here through our slavery in America. Right along, with the, along with the West Indians and, and the Haitians. This is the house of Judah, right? They came into slavery together here in America. But we also got the Hispanics that, were, that, were, that had their slavery in South America. She said she wanted to listen. Right? Sit next to your sister. And in the Caribbean, right? So now we got Simeon. These are known as the, the Dominicans today. This is their biblical names here on the left. This is our, our slave names, the, land, the names that our captains gave us over here on the right. Zebulon, that's Guatemala and Panama. Yeah. Ephraim are you so-called Puerto Ricans. Manasseh are the Cubans. Gad are the North Americans, Indian here in America. Gad, right? Ruben is the Seminole Indians down there in Florida, the Everglades. Neftali is Argentina to Chile. Asher is Colombia to Uruguay. Issachar to York, Uruguay, Uruguay. Issachar is the Mexicans. So now the Lord said, he showed his statutes and his commandments to these people right here. And he hasn't dealt so with any other nation. So we need to know that, right? We need to know that because these are the people that the Lord set up to be his, his nations of priests and teachers so that all other nations could come unto the Lord and know the truth of the Lord, right? Read the Baruch. Let me get Baruch 3, 35 and 37. Baruch 3 and 35. This is our power. Right. This shall none other be accounted of, of in comparison to him. Yeah, so you not so that it just killed all the idolatry. It's only one power, it's only one son. Kill the all this religious stuff, all these religions are idols. Back in back in the times they used to make up images and they used to make up statues and things of that nature. Now these people they make it up in their mind. And then they call it religion. But we know it is idolatry, right? Read on. This is our power. And there should no other be accounted of in comparison of him. Right. He hath found out all the way of knowledge, uh -huh. and hath given it unto Jacob his servant, right. and to Israel his beloved. Right. Afterwards did he show himself upon the earth, right. and converse with them. Yeah, so the Lord, he said he only showed it to Jacob. So if anybody's trying to learn about the Lord of truth and sincerity, you got to come to the nation of Israel. you got to check out. You can't go to the Indian. You can't go to the, the, uh, the, to the, the white man. You can't go to the African. Because the Lord said he showed it unto his nation of people. Those are the people you got to come check out. And the, the sad part is we don't even know who we are in the earth, so we're not even playing our roles. We're not even playing the roles that we want to be. Everybody want to be a basketball player. Everybody want to be a football player. Nobody don't want to stand up and be a priest of the Lord. Right? Finish the verse right now. Read it down to seven. Ezekiel 20 and 6. Right? In the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them to bring them forth out of the land of Egypt right. into a land that I have espied for them, flowing with milk and honey. That's the point that I'm just getting back to. This is where we left. We was in a land flowing with milk and honey, wealthy, living good. We had no problems. The Lord, he, he fed us. You know what I mean? We, we had no want of anything, right? Read it down, read it. Which is the glory of all land. And it's the glory of all land. So this scripture is heavy too because it's showing who his chosen people are, the nation of Israel, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Indians, right? And it's also showing his chosen land. His chosen land being the, the land of Israel, right? The land they call Palestine now. Read on. Then said I unto them. Wait, down to seven, right? Yeah, you might want to eat to it. Then said I unto them, cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes. And defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. Uh -huh. I am the Lord your power. So straight up and down, that's all the Lord was asking of us. The Lord, he chose us as a nation of people. He gave us a land flowing with milk and honey, so we, we have one and nothing. And all he asks is that we serve him and not the idols of the nations that he took out of that land before us. 
to tell you the truth, we ended up falling off from that. We didn't even we didn't even hold on to that. We ended up falling off. And that's why we're here in America doing miserable. And one of all things looking at every other nation to, su to support us and to give us money and, and these things, right? Where we were self-sufficient, we had our own land, our own army. We don't have any of that no more because we turned our backs on the Lord, right? Let me get Deuteronomy. When I looked at the kids, matter of fact, yeah, let me get you read the kings, right? Yeah, let me get Deuteronomy 11, 11 and 8. Over here, so give me Ezekiel 36 and 1. Deuteronomy 11 and 8. I want to one down to 11. Therefore shall you keep the commandments which I command you this day. Right. That you may be strong uh -huh. and go in and possess the land whether you go to possess it. Right. That you may prolong your days uh -huh. in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers so to give unto them and to their seed yeah, so a land that flowed with milk and honey. So that's what the Lord asks of us. He asks us to, to, to be strong. To be, we make ourselves strong by keeping his commandments. Like the scriptures say, he that got clean hands, he's only going to get stronger and stronger. You know what I mean? As long as you walk in with the Lord, he's going to pump you up. And the Lord said, keep his commandments so that we be, we be strong to go and take this land that he gave us, right? Read, um, go ahead, read on. Deuteronomy 11 and 10. For the land whither thou goest to possess it, right. it is not a land of Egypt from which you came out. Yeah, the land, the land of Israel... It's not like the land of Egypt that we was in. It's a difference. Read on. With thou sowest thy seed, right. and water is it with thy foot. Yeah, you work hard. In, the in Egypt, they had to work hard, hard, till the ground real hard to get anything to grow up out of it. This land isn't like that. This land was flowing with milk and honey. It was a, a very fertile land. You just drop seeds in it, and everything is growing up out of it. Right. Read on. But the land where thou goest to possess it, it is a land of hills. And valleys, right? And drinking water of the rain of heaven, right? A land which the Lord thy power cares for. Yeah, let's talk about the land of Israel. Read on. The eyes of the Lord, thy power is always upon thee, for the beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year. Yeah, so it's just like how he's doing with the nation of Israel. He's the, the same way he separates them from all other nations, the same thing he's doing with that land over there. That land, he, he, he has care to it more than any other land. Because he says his eyes are over it, and he has. His mind has stayed upon it, you know what I mean? Read on. It is, it is, excuse me, and it shall be, and it shall come to pass, if that you shall hearken diligently unto the commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your power, and to serve him with all your heart, right. and with all your soul, that I will give you the reign of your land in his due season. Straight up and down. Straight up and down. People, like I, like I started off, people forget the hand that's feeding them. If the Lord don't make the rain come down, you can't eat. If the Lord don't make this food come up out, as long as this earth been in existence, this food been coming out this earth from the Lord. The Lord is playing his part. It's us, we're not doing our part, right? Read on. And it shall, verse 13, and it shall come to pass, that you shall hearken diligently unto the commandment, commandments which I command you this day. To love the Lord your power, and to serve him with all your heart, and with all your soul, that I will give you the reign of your land in due season. Yeah, so all the Lord is asking is that we, we walk in his commandments, right? And he says he's going to take care of us. Read on. The first rain and the latter rain, right? that thou mayest gather in thy corn, right? thy wine, and thy oil. Uh -huh. And I will send grass right? and I fill for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, and you turn aside and go after other powers and worship them. See, now this is the problem. This is, the, this is where we're at now. We were doing so good for so long that we thought that we were doing these things on our own. We thought that it was just our work and, and work in the ground that all this stuff was growing. We thought it was through us, right? After a while, we forgot about the Lord because we were doing so good. Our mind was on our wealth and on our corn and on our wine more than it was on the Creator that was giving us these things, right? And that's the problem. Did you read down to, uh, to 17? 17. 17, yeah. And then the Lord's wrath was kindled against you. And he shut you and shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, and that the land you are not her fruit, fruit, unless you perish quickly for the good land which the Lord given you. That's what the Lord, that's what the Lord promised that if we was to turn our backs on them, he was gonna hold back the rain. He was gonna hold back that food. And if you look at that land in Israel right now, that land is a desert. It's not a land flowed with milk and honey anymore. It's not the most fertile land on the planet anymore. It's a desert. You can hardly get anything out of it. Matter of fact, America carries that land. 
If America didn't give all the imports and all the supplies, that land would be done. If America wasn't backing them up, right? We got uh, 14 and uh, 15 to go, go down to 16. No, we 13, 14, and 15. Deuteronomy 11 and 13. And it shall come to pass. Wait, hold on. Did you read that Ezekiel? Hold on. Can you get this Ezekiel 36 1, 1 to 11? Ezekiel 36 and 1. Right. Also thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, uh -huh. and say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Yeah, we still talk about the land. We talk about the holy land of Israel. Read on. Thus saith the Lord power, because the enemy had set, had set against thee, aha, even the, ancient, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. But that's where it is today, 2013. We don't have that land anymore. The so-called white man has control over that land. Even though it's Palestinians and Israelis living in it, you got Muslims and some Jews living in that land, and still the so-called white man that's really, he's the hand that's, that's, that's governing that whole land right now, right? And they're laughing because they got the ancient holy highlands in possession. They have it now, where we, we used to have it, but we, we, we let it go through our wickedness, right? Through our turning our backs on the Lord. We don't. Therefore prophesy and say, thus saith the Lord power, because they have made you desolate, Right. And swallowed you up on every side, uh -huh. that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the heathen. Right. And ye are taken up in the lips of talkers. Stop. Every day on the news, what are they talking about? They always talk about peace in the Middle East. They want peace in the Middle East. It's always war. If it's not a Syria, it's Iraq. If it's not Iraq, it's Iran. There's always problems in the Middle East over there. It's in the lips of talkers. They're always talking about that land. It's always in the news. That's the most fought over land in history. They had crusades over that land. Every every year, it's something new with that land. They always fighting over it, right? Read on. Read that verse again. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord power, because they have made you desolate, right? and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be made a possession unto the residue of the heathen. Yeah, it's talking about the, the Esau. Esau, we know he's the residue of the heathen, because even though he has so much power in the earth right now, out of all the, the nationalities, he's the smallest people. Calls us minorities, but when you look on the worldwide scale, the so-called white man is the, is, the, is the fewest people on the planet compared to the other nations, right? Yeah, he calls us the minorities, right? Read on. And ye are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy of the people. It's an infamy. They, it's always in the news. They're always talking about that land of Israel. Read on. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord power. Right. Thus said the Lord power to the mountains and to the hills. Yeah, the Lord is talking to the land. He's prophesying to the land. Read on. To the rivers and to the valleys and to the desolate wastes and to the cities that are fors forsaken. Right. Which became a prey and a derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Yeah. Because we don't, we don't have that land no more. It's not, we're here in America doing bad. That land is doing bad because we're not there. Because just like I said earlier, just like the Lord, he has a, a special relationship with the nation of Israel. He has a special purpose for that land. And we, we, we go together. If we're not in that land, that land is not going to be doing good. Right? It's heathen that's in that land right now. That's why it's doing bad. They're not walking by the statues of the Lord over there. Read on. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, Surely, in the fire of my jealousy, have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. Right? And against all I do me. Yeah, all the people that want to go put their hands on the land of the Lord. I want to go take it as a possession, right? Read on. Which have appointed my land into their possession, right? With the joy of all their heart, with a spiteful mind to cast it out for a prey, right? Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel, right? And say unto the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, uh -huh. thus saith the Lord power, behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, right? because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. Yeah, because the heathen are there. We're not there no more, but it's filled with heathen, the people that have no, no consideration for the Lord. Read on. Ezekiel 36 and 7. Therefore thus saith the Lord power, right. I have lifted, lifted up mine hand. Uh -huh. Surely the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. Yeah, they're not going to have that land forever. It's not going to be in their possession forever. Read on. But ye, O mountains of Israel, uh -huh. ye, shall, ye shall shoot forth your branches uh -huh. and yield your fruit to my people of Israel. Yeah, even though that land is a desert right now, the Lord's saying he's going to pull up a miracle. That desert is going to shoot forth branches again.
that land has got to become fertile again. Right, read on. And yield your fruit to my people of Israel. Yeah, when the nation of Israel come back to that land, that land is going to get juiced up again for, for the Lord's people. Read on. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches, right? and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, right? for they are at hand to come. Yeah. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be, and ye shall be tilled, tilled and sold, and I will multiply men upon you. Deuteronomy 32, 13. He made him ride on the high places of the earth. Yeah, this is how we used to be. Before, before we turned from the Lord and ended up here in America as slaves, right? We don't. That he might eat the increase of the fields, right? And that he might, and that he made him to suck honey out of the rock and yeah. oil out of the flinty rock. We do Butter of kind, milk of sheep with the fat of lamb, right? And rams of the breed of Bashan. Yeah, this is how our brother was considered wealthy back then. The brother had a lot of cattle. He had a lot of sheep. He had a lot of wheat. This this was a rich brother who was considered living good, right? We don't. And goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat, right? And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grapes. Yeah, right. We don't. But Joshua waxed fat, uh huh, and kicked, right? Dog waxing fat, uh huh. Dog grown thick, right? Dog covered with fat, fatness, right? Then he forsook the Most High, which made him. See now, that's the problem. And you see that even today, whenever a brother start getting a little bit of money, a brother start doing good, what happens? He end up. Most of them, like a lot of the athletes, they go and they get them a trophy white woman. They turn it back against the Lord. Or a brother, he might just move out of his neighborhood, forget everybody else that's doing bad in his neighborhood, and just go get his little thing going. As soon as he get a little bit of wealth, as soon as he get a little bit of money flowing. And that's the problem. Once we start doing good, once we start living fat, we forget about the Lord. We're thinking about our money and, the, and things that we could do with it. Right? Let me get... Deuteronomy 32.15. Joshua waxed fat. Right? Joshua, Joshua is a spiritual name for the nation of Israel. We still talk about the same people, right? You know what? Dark waxing fat. Uh huh. Dark covered, dark grown thick. Right? Dark covered with fat. And look at look, a lot of slang come out of the Bible too. Because brothers and sisters say that today. I'm living fat. You know what I mean? All these, these a lot of slang. You'd be surprised. A lot of this stuff comes from the Bible. We don't. Then he forsook the power which made him. Right? And lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. And lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. We forgot. God about the Lord because we feel like we're doing good. After a while, we think that we're doing these things on our own. You go into a job, I work eight hours, you get, you forgot it's the Lord that gave you that job. You know what I mean? Read what you got, huh? Deuteronomy 8 and 1. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Yeah, so if somebody asks you why you want to keep the commandments of the Lord, so tell them because you want to live, or you want to multiply, right? Read on. And thou shalt remember all the ways which the Lord thy power led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. Yeah, man. To humble thee, uh -huh. and to prove thee, and to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Stop, so, so that's the next thing. Israel was conditioned. We was brought through this wilderness. To, that whole thing was to prove who's going to serve the Lord and who's not going to serve the Lord. Who's going to murmur against the Lord and who's going to stay faithful. That, that, wood, that whole wilderness, 40 days and 40 nights, that was all to try us. It was a, all, all a preparation to train us. He brought us to the mountain in 40 years. He brought us to the mountain, gave us his commandments. He schooled us. That's what we call the schoolmaster. He trained us in his ways. So that we could we could walk in his ways and we could show other nations his ways, right? We don't Deuteronomy 8 and 3. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, right? And fed thee with mammon, right? Which thou knewest not. Yeah, he was proving us. Like we, he, he just opened up the sea, brought them out the wilderness, but brothers were still doubting. Some brothers were still doubting, so he was feeding them with the bread from heaven. He was feeding them with manna in the wilderness. He even made them go hungry to see what they would do, how they would act. And if, if they would, if they would, if they would stick to the Lord, or if they would turn their backs, right? Read on. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know, right? That, that men doth not live by bread alone, right? But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Yeah, we were just talking about it. It's not just the bread that that keeps you alive. It's the spirit. It's the word of the Lord, and it's the Lord that make bread too. So you be better off being alive with the Lord, because it's Lord, it's the Lord that's going to give you the bread too. You gotta make it grow out the dirt. You gotta make it grow out the earth. Right, read on. 
Thy raiment wax not old upon thee. Right there in the 40 years in the wilderness, that was another miracle. None of their clothes wax old and got holes in it, their shoes didn't break down. That whole 40 years they was in the wilderness, right, we don't. Neither, neither did thy foot swell these 40 years. Right. Thou shalt, not, thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, right. so the Lord power chasteneth thee. Straight up and down. And the Bible say he that, 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 that don't correct his, his child or don't show his child a rod, it's like you hate your child because you're not showing him no correction. If you love somebody, you're going to correct them, straight up and down. If you got children and you don't correct them, they're going to go out, go out of your house and somebody else is going to check them. Whether it's the so-called white man, the police, whether it's another gang member or whatever, somebody's going to correct them. So it's better that they get the chastity from the people that love them, right? We don't. Therefore, thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy power, to walk in his ways, uh -huh. and to fear him. Right? For the Lord thy power bringeth thee into a good land. Right? A land of brooks and water, right? of fountains and depths. Yeah, let's talk about that land of Israel again, right? Read on. That spring out of valleys and hills. Uh -huh. A land of wheat and barley, right? and vines and, of, and fig trees, right? and pomegranates. Uh -huh. of land, a land of oil, of olive oil and honey. Right? Beautiful land, right? Read on. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. Right. A land whose stone are iron. Iron. Right. And out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Right. When thou hast eaten and art full, uh -huh. then thou shalt bless the Lord thy power. Right. For the good land which he hath given thee. Yeah, but the problem is, a lot of us we eat and we get full, then we forget. Right? Read on. Beware that thou forgettest not the Lord thy power, right. and not keeping his commandments, and his judgments, right. and his statutes which I command thee this day. And that's what happened. Like we spin it off. Just run, they wax fat. And after they wax fat, now they're kicking against the Lord. Right? Because they're doing so good. They feel they starting to feel like they don't need the Lord. Like they did this on their own. Right? And they forgot and they were and they lightly esteemed their rock. Read on. Deuteronomy 8 and 12. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, right. and hast built goodly houses, uh -huh. and dwelt therein, uh -huh. and when their herd, herds and, and thy flocks multiply, right. and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, right. and all that thou hast is multiplied, right. then thine heart be lifted up, uh -huh. and thou forget the Lord thy power, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, yeah, from the house of bondage. Good. Brothers started doing good. They started getting nice houses. They started getting silver, and they started getting gold. And they forgot about the Lord, right? Read on. Who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness, right? Wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions, uh -huh. and drought, right? Uh, it's and, all the protection drought. of the Lord that we made it through that wilderness. You know, the brothers, the scorpions, had all type of wild beasts. You know what I mean? It was all through the protection of the Lord that we made it through that. Read on. Who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness, right? Wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions, right? and drought where there was no water right who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint straight up and down brothers and sisters turned on the lord so bad and angered moses and moses he smoked the rock and he, he even he forgot because because uh, he was provoked he forgot to give the lord thanks so moses he never got to live in the holy land his eyes his eyes only seen it but he never got to to go over to the jordan to, to, to go see that to go see the, the holy land right read on deuteronomy 8 and 16 who fed thee in the wilderness with mammon, right. which thy fathers knew not, that ye might humble thee, right. and that he might prove thee, uh -huh. to do thee good at the latter end. Right. And thou say in thine heart, my power, and the might of my hand hath gotten me this, this wealth. Right. <laughs> but thou shalt remember the Lord thy power, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Straight up and down. So it's the Lord that give you power to get wealth too. You're not supposed to set your heart on the riches. You're supposed to set your heart on the Lord, right? And then all these other stuff is going to be added to you down the line. You're not supposed to go chase after wealth, though. Because if you go chase after wealth, you're going to end up falling. You're going to end up tripping while you're taking that chase. Chase after the Lord, and he's going to add all these other things to you, right? Read on. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy power, right? For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. It's he that giveth thee power to get wealth. Read on that he may establish his covenant, uh -huh. which he swear unto your fathers, 
as it is this day, right? And it shall be, if thou do all, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy power right. and walk after other gods yeah, and serve after, them. Walk after other religions. The gods they talk about now, if you bring it up to today, it's talking about religions, right? Because every other nation had a religion back then. Every other nation had an idol. And we had the, the Lord our power. But what happened is when we went through slavery and we passed through their lands, we started worshiping some of their idols. We started taking up some of their ways. And all that things was all, all of that was against us. Right? Read on. Deuteronomy 8 and 19. And it shall be, if thou if thou do it all, forget the Lord thy power, right? And walk after other powers and uh -huh. serve them uh -huh. and worship them. Right? I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. Right? As the nations which the Lord is So, just round wax fat and kicked against the Lord. There's nothing wrong with waxing fat. Just don't forget the Lord. It's not wrong with being wealthy or the Lord juicing you up. Just don't forget where it's coming from, right? You know what? Nehemiah 9 and 24. So the children went in and possessed the land, right? And thou subduest before them the inhabitants of the land. Stop. It's talking about Joshua and his camp when they went in and took the Holy Land. When it was still inhabited by the Canaanites and Africans and these other nations, the Lord blessed us so we could go and take that land from them. Right? Read on. So the children went in and possessed the land, and thou subduest before them the inhabitants of the land, right? the Canaanites, and gave us them into their hands uh -huh. with their kings. And the kings, right? And the people of the land, that they might do with them as they would. Right? And they took strong cities uh -huh. and a fat land, right? possessed houses. Fat land. Full of all goods. Right? Wells dig. Yeah, the vineyards. wells is already dead. Springs. Springs of water. Vineyards of uh, grapes for wine, right? Read on. And olive yards. Olive, and, olive, what's that? Olives? Okay, read on. And fruit trees in abundance. Uh-huh. So they did eat and were filled. Right? And became fat. Became fat. And delighted themselves in that great goodness. Right? Nevertheless, they were disobedient and rebelled against Now here it comes. They got fat and now they kicked against the Lord again. It's another example. They were doing so good, they forgot the hand that was feeding them, right? Read on. And cast thy law behind their backs. They forgot about the righteous ways, right? Read on. And slew thy prophets. Yeah, and killed the brothers and sisters that were standing up trying to teach this word, right? Read on. Which testified against them to turn from them, that, excuse me, and testified against them to turn them to thee. Right. And they wrought great provocation. Yeah, and they provoked the Lord to anger, right? Read on. Verse 27. Therefore, thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies. Yeah, the same thing while we here in America today, because we forgot about the Lord. We forgot about his ways, right? So now here the Lord come humble us up, right? And if we don't get it right here, it's a problem, you know what I mean? But the Lord did say that even in the land of our captivities, we're going to remember ourselves. And you see it starting to happen. When you see, what have you ever seen brothers coming up knowing who they are, saying they from the house of Israel, saying I'm a Judite? That hasn't been happening until recently, right? So we see that the Lord is working, right? Read on. Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies, who vexed them. Right. And in the time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, right. thou heardest them from heaven. Mm -hmm. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gatherest them, gavest them safety. Yeah, like we started off, the Lord do deal with the nation of Israel different than other nations. And even though we fell off and we went backwards, and when we got trapped, we got into captivity, and we cried unto the Lord, the Lord was still giving us play. Right? We cried unto the Lord, and the Lord still gave us some play. Read on. Therefore, thou deliverest them into the hands of their enemies, right? who vexed them. Uh -huh. And in the time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. Yeah. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors, right? who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. And we see that the Lord, he's always he's raising up saviors. He's raised up brothers like Gideon. He's ra he raised up brothers like... Things. He raised up brothers like Christ. Like Christ. He, he's always raising up saviors, brothers and sisters that stand up and remind us who we are, remind us what we should be doing to, to keep the laws and the commandments of the Lord, right? He continually does this. It's like a cycle that continually goes on. We fall off, we forget about the Lord, we go into slap captivity and slavery, we do bad, we cry unto the Lord, the Lord send us another savior, this brother stand up, lead the whole nation of people, that he died that we forget. It's like it's like a, a cycle that we gotta break. We got we can't be forgetful of the Lord, right? Read on. 28. But after they had rest, 
they did evil again before them. They forgot. As soon as they got peace, they was doing fat, they was doing good, they forgot about the Lord again. Read on. Therefore, left us thou them in the hand of their enemies. So he left us in the hand of our enemies, just like I said today, right here in America. In the land of our enemies. Don't even know who we are, a lot of us. That's why we out here trying to remind you, trying to give you a little bit of history, right? Read on. So that they had dominion over them. Right. Yet, when they returned and cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. Right. And many times did this thou deliver them. Yeah, when, when it's talking verse. about crying, it's not like they just boo hoo in the tears. It's talking about prayer. Because people, like men, act like they can't pray or like it's a soft thing to pray. But that's the only link you got to the Lord is through prayer. And the Lord is saying, all these times we fell off, we got back together as a nation of people. He raised up a Savior. We cried unto him. And the Lord had respect to that. He showed, he gave us a play. Right? He came and he saved us out of the hands of our enemies. And that's, that's still our hope. That the Lord is going to deliver us out of here in America. We went all the way down to 37. We went down to 37. Verse 29. Right? And testified against them that thou mightest bring them again unto thy law. Yet they dwelt proud and hearkened not unto thy commandments, but sinned against thy judgment. And that's where we at today. Brothers and sisters are too proud. They feel like they got their set up. They're comfortable, they got their houses, they're doing good, they got their jobs, they feel like they're good. Read that verse again. Verse 29, Nehemiah 9.29, And testified against them, that thou mightest bring them again unto thy law. Right. Yet they dwelt proudly, uh -huh. and hearkened not unto thy commandments, uh -huh. but sinned against thy judgment. Straight up and down. So if a person don't hearken unto the Lord's commandments, in his mind he got to have a better plan, he got a better way. But the truth, in the truth, there's no better way than the laws and the commandments and the statutes that the Lord gave the Moses. There's no better way. The Lord know better than us. He's the creator, you know what I mean? We, we, we can't come up with better ways than the Lord, how to live. Read on. Verse 29. And testified against them that thou mightest bring them again unto thy law. Right. Yet they dwelt proudly and hearkened not unto thy commandments. Yeah, brothers and sisters are too proud, especially the nation of Israel. We rebel too much. Just because it's a, somebody says it's a law, it's a commandment, they want to rebel against it. Read on. But sin against thy judgment, right? which if a man do, he shall live in them. Straight up and down. Like if a man, he live according to the commandments, the Lord said he's going to live in them. It's not something that you just do on Saturday. It's not something you just do on Sunday. It's a lifestyle. Just like if a person is going to be against the ways of the Lord, that's going to be his lifestyle. He's going to live a life of sin. His whole life is going to be a life of sin. You know what I mean? He's not going to have no life. He's not going to have no truth going on, right? Read on. And we drew the shoulder and hardened their necks and were not here. Yeah, we turned. We turned from the Lord. We hard-headed. We withdrew ourselves from the Lord. Read on. Yet many years did his thou forbid them, right? And testified against them by the Spirit and thy prophets. Yeah, he brought up, he raised up brothers and sisters that, that stood up and they, and they taught this word. And we're not going to sit up here and say we prophets because we know through the scriptures that the, the, the prophets were until John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the last prophet. Since then, the, 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 king, the, the Bible is preached. Now we preach the Bible. But we also understand in the New Testament, it says that the, the, uh, the testimony of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And we also understand that the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So those brothers and sisters that was raised up teaching the people back then, it's the same spirit that's coming back in the brothers and sisters today to put this word out to you, right? Read on. Nehemiah 9 and 30. Yet many years did thou forbid them and testified against them by the spirit of thy prophets. Right. Yet would they not give ear. Uh -huh. Therefore gavest thou them into the hands of the people of the land. Right. Nevertheless, for thy great mercy's sake, thou didst not utterly consume them. Yeah, that's why we're here today. The Lord didn't utterly consume us because of our sins. He gave, he gave us some mercy. And that's why we're still here today. Read on. Verse 31. Nevertheless, for thy great mercy's sake, thou didst not utterly consume them. Right. Nor forsake them. For thou art gracious and merciful power. Right. Now therefore, our power, the great, the mighty, and the terrible power, who keep his covenant right. and mercy. Let not all the trouble seem little before you. Right. The, the Lord, the Lord stop. The Lord do keep covenant and keep mercy. We just gotta come back to the Lord in truth and sincerity. We gotta remember a Sabbath day. That's a good way to start. Start with the Sabbath. Shut it down. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. Shut it down. Leave, leave the world, close your door, leave the world out there. Come inside and praise the Lord. Study, learn, get some history, get some knowledge of who you are. You know, see, see, see what you're going to do. You know how to live your life and where it's going to go down the line. Right? You got to build yourself up to that by, by taking heed to these scriptures. Read on. 
Nehemiah 9 and 32. Now therefore, our power, the great, the right. mighty, and the terrible power, who keep his covenant and mercy, let not all the trouble seem little before thee. Yeah, don't let us be here in America jacked up, worried about rent, worried about living in the projects, playing with rats and roaches. Don't let these things seem little to, to the Lord. You know what I mean? That's, we want the Lord to remember us, right? But the Lord is not going to remember nobody that doesn't remember him. Read on. That have come upon us, on our king, right? on our prince, right? on our priests. Yeah, we used to be kings and princes and priests in these things, and now we're here in America as slaves, right? Read on. And on our prophets, and on our, and on our fathers. Right? You know, all thy people since the time of the kings of Assyria. Yeah, since that, this day. Yeah. Since the since the times of Assyria, when the when the southern kingdom went into um into slavery, we've been going into in and out of slavery since then. Since that first Babylonian captivity and that Assyrian captivity, we've never been back to that holy land. Just continual captivities from one nation to the next nation. We're here now in America, right? Let me get Jeremiah 2, 1 to 11. Let me get Jeremiah 5. Verse 33, how be it, thou art just in all that is brought upon us. Yeah, he's just because we went off. We the ones that forgot him. So if he come and chasten us, he's doing it out of love, right? Read on. For thou hast done right, but we have done wickedly. Straight up and down. The Lord is the Lord is right. We forgot the Lord, right? We the ones that turned the back on the Lord. Read on. Neither have our kings, our princes, our priests, nor our fathers kept thy law. Yeah, none of them kept it all together, right? We are. Nor hearkening to thy commandments and thy testimonies, wherewith thou didst testify against them. Right. For they had not served thee in their kingdom, and in thy great goodness that thou gavest them, and in the large and fat land right. which thou gavest before them. Uh -huh. Neither turned they from their wicked works. Behold, we are servants this day. Right. For the land that thou gavest to our fathers, right. to eat the fruit thereof, uh -huh. and the good thereof, right. behold, we are servants in it. <laughs> and it yielded much increase unto the kings, right. whom thou hast set over us, because of our sins. Also, they have dominion over our bodies, right. and over our cattle, and over our pleasure. Uh -huh. We are in great distress. Yeah, we're in great distress, man. Great distress, because we're jacked up as a nation of people. And the Holy Land is jacked up too. And, the, and, the, and, the, and the, we got Edomites and heathen in there, you know, laughing because they got the ancient holy places in possession. Read what you got, Ak. You got 10 minutes to work. Jeremiah 2 and 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, right. Go, cry in the ears of Jerusalem, right. saying, Thus said the Lord, I remember thee, right. the kindness of thy youth. Right? The love of thine espousal. Right? Because the Lord considers us to be like his bride. Like the Lord is married unto the nation of Israel. That's why he's talking about the espousals, right? Read on. When thou wentest after me in the wilderness. Yeah, when we followed the Lord through the wilderness. When the Lord led us along through the wilderness. Right? Read on. In a land that was not sown. Right? Israel was holiness unto the, unto the Lord. Yeah, back then we, was, we had it right. Read on. And the first fruits of his increase. And the first fruits out of all nations of the earth, Israel is considered his first fruits, right? Read on. All that devour him shall offend. Yeah, when they was doing righteously, anybody that came up against us, whether war or against the Lord, the Lord would deal with them. But it's not like that no more. We don't have that protection no more because we're not walking in the commandments of the Lord anymore, right? Read on. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. Right. Hear ye the word of the Lord. O house of Jacob, right. and all the families of the house of Israel. Yeah, man, hear this word. Don't turn your back on it. Have an open ear to this word. Read on. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, right. that ye are gone afar from me? Straight up and down. What, what's wrong with the Lord? What's wrong with the Bible? Why nobody don't want to deal with it? Is the Bible telling you to do something wrong? Is it telling you to go and do something evil? Has the Lord dealt with you evil? Did the Lord not bring the sun out when you needed it to be out? Did the, I mean... What iniquity have, have you found in the Lord that you don't want to serve him, right? Read that verse again. Jeremiah 2 and 5. Thus saith the Lord, What iniquity have your fathers found in me, that ye are gone far from me, right? and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? What's better than the Lord? You, you left the Lord so you can have a car? You lifting up this car more than the Lord? What, you lifting up a job more than the Lord? I mean... Why would you turn your back on the Lord and, look, and, and chase vanity, right? Things that don't profit. Read on. Neither said they, 
where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt? Yeah, we're sitting here in captivity doing bad, and nobody's standing up saying, where is the Lord that used to do these great works back in Egypt? What happened to that power, right? Read on. Neither said they, where is the Lord that brought us out of brought us up out of the land of Egypt. They don't even ask. Brothers don't even look, right? Read on. That led us through the wilderness, right? through a land of desert and pits, through a land of drought, uh -huh. and of the shadow of death. Yeah, man, there's no way we would have made it through that wilderness without the Lord. Wild beasts and animals, scorpions and whatnot, we would have never made it, right? Read on. Through a land that no man passed oh. through, and where no man dwelt. Right. And I brought you into a, a plant a plentiful country. Yeah, we still talk about that, that land flow with milk and honey. Read on. To eat the fruit thereof. Right. And the goodness thereof. Right. But when you but when you entered, but when you entered, ye defiled my land and Jeshua, made my inheritance an abomination. Read that verse again. Just wrong wax fat and then he kicked. That's what happened. We started again, it's just showing you again. We got into the land, plenteous with, with fruits and all these things. Live fat, wax fat, did good, build houses lived in the houses, forgot about the Lord that set us up. Deuteronomy 32, 15. When Joshua waxed fat right? and kicked, uh -huh. Yah waxed fat, right? Yah grown thick, Yah covered with fatness. Mm -hmm. Then he forsook the most high which made him, and rightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Right, pick it back up. Jeremiah 2 and 7, and I brought you into a plenteous country right? to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. Right? But when you enter thee, Ye, def ye defiled my land right. and made my inheritance an abomination. Right. And the priest said, yeah. and the priest said not, yeah. where is the Lord? Right. And they that, that handled the law knew me not. Yeah, the people that handled the Lord, the, the, the Lord nowadays, these so-called preachers and, and pastors, they, it's like they don't know the Lord. They don't know the Lord's people. They don't teach this stuff, right? Read on. The pastors also transgressed against me. Right. And the prophets prophesied by Baal. Right? They prophesied by religion and for money and for gain of these things. Right? Read on. And walk after things that do not profit. That don't profit. Right? Vain things. Read on. That's it. 11. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children, your children's children, will I plead. Yeah, that's the mercy of the Lord. Even though we, we went off, he's still dealing with us. He's still giving us a chance. Right? Read on. For pass over the isles of Shittim right. and see, uh -huh. and send to Kedar, Kedar and right. consider. Right? He said, go check out the, the, um, the, the Greeks, go check out the Arabians and consider. Consider what's going on with the nation of Israel, right? Come on. Consider diligently right. and see if there be such a thing. Right. Have the nation changed their powers, right. which are yet no powers? Right. But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Do you see that amongst the Negroes more than any other nation? The Negroes, they want to run and be like every other nation except their own people. They want to, like, like Tina Turner, she want to be a Buddhist. You know, you got Malcolm X, he's, the truth, he's an Israelite. You know what I mean? He came over here in slavery and captivity. He's from those descendants, but now he want to go be a Muslim. Those aren't our, that's not our ways. That's not the ways of our people. You know what I mean? And, and, and us, more than any other nation, do that. We leave off our own identity and want to go chase after other people's religions. When we need to just deal with the Bible and with the law, and the commandments of the Lord, right? Read what you got. Jeremiah 5 and 25. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withheld the good things from you. Yeah, we're supposed to be having good things. We're supposed to be getting good things. The chief things is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and the spirit that come on high. Those are the, the good things that we really want, but other good things could be added too. But the Lord is saying we can't get those things because we're not walking uprightly, right? We're not walking righteously. What's the root word of righteous? Right, to be right. Who wants to be wrong? Nobody wants to be wrong, right? You want to be right. You want to do the right things, right? Read on. Jeremiah 5, 26. For among my people are found wicked men. Yeah, among the nation of Israel, even though we're the chosen nation of the people, the people the Lord gave his commandments and statutes to, even among us is still evil, evil men, right? Read on. For among my people are found wicked men. Right. They lay wait as he that set his snares. They set traps. Yeah, they they catch me. They set traps for their own brothers and sisters. And the biggest example I can think of with this is religion. How they, they come with all these lies and they take people money. And yet the preachers is living fat and everybody in the congregation is doing bad. Right? Read on. Jeremiah 5 and 
27. As the cage is full of birds, uh -huh. so their house is full of deceit. Right. Therefore, are they become great again, and wax rich. Again, this could be applied to other examples, but the one I'm using now is these preachers. Their houses is filled with all these good things, and yet all they teach in is lies. They're not teaching who we are as a nation of people. They're not teaching who Christ was, you know what I mean, his identity, his tribe that he came from. They're not teaching, they're not teaching the truth. They're teaching about getting out of debt and things like that, right? Read on. Jeremiah 5 and 28. They are waxing fat. Right. They shine. Uh-huh. Yeah. They overpass the deeds of the wicked. Yeah, they wax fat and they shine and they pass the deeds of the wicked because they're doing it to their own people, right? Read on. They judge not the cause of the fatherless. Right. Yet they prosper. Right. And the right of the needy, do they not judge? Right. Shall I not visit for these things? Yeah, the Lord says he's going to visit all you lying preachers that come with all these lies and don't teach the people who they, who they are as a nation of people and how they should be living. The Lord said he's going to deal with y'all, right? See what you got out. This is the other side of the zone right here. Because you don't want to, because we're talking about how Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked against the Lord. This is how you get out of that situation. This is the mindset you got to get out of that. Ecclesiasticus 11 and 14. Right. Prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come of the Lord. That's what we've been saying since the beginning. All these things come from the Lord. So if you want those things, you want to line yourself up with the Lord. Whether it's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, poverty, I mean riches, all these things come from the Lord. Read on. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding of the law right. are of the Lord. Right. Love and the way of good works are from him. Yeah, they come from the Lord, right? Error and darkness had their beginning together with sinners. Right. And evil shall wax old with them that glory therein. Yeah, evil it had its beginning with sinners. All that darkness, all that, that confusion is going to be for the sinners. And it says it's going to wax old. All that's going to be played out. Eventually all that's going to get played out, right? Read on. The gift of the Lord right. remaineth with the powerless. Right. And his, and his favor bring it prosperity forever. Yeah, man, this is the righteous way to balance it out. You could get prosperity, but don't forget about the Lord, right? Read on. There is that waxeth rich uh -huh. by weariness and pension. Yeah, some people, they wax rich because they work hard and they save. So your reward, you're going to have a lot of money saved up, right? You work hard and you save. Read on. And this is the portion of his reward. Right, that's his portion. This is money that he saved, right? Read on. Whereas he said, I found rest. Right. And now will eat continually of my goods. Uh -huh. And yet he knoweth not what time shall come upon him, and that he must leave those things to others and die. Yeah, that's the big loophole in living for richness, living to be wealthy and to be rich. You don't know when the Lord is going to take that spirit back out of you, and who's going to get that money after you. Right. Be steadfast in thy covenant, and right. be conversant therein, right. and wax old in thy work. Yeah, so just keep continuing in the, in the works of the Lord. You know what I mean? Don't set your heart on the money. Read on. I want that down the line. Marvel not at the works of sinners, yeah. but trust in the Lord, and abide in thy labor. Right. For it is as an, an easy thing in the right. sight of the Lord on a sudden to make a poor man rich. Right. The blessing of the Lord is the reward of the powerless. Right. And suddenly he maketh his blessing to flourish. Yeah, man. So don't marvel at the, the wicked people that's doing good. Because they, they, they doing good because the earth is set up and it's given into the hands of the wicked. So if you're wicked in the earth right now, the wicked, is gonna, they're going to go together. They're going to work on the Sabbath. They're going to do all these things to get the money. And they're going to get that money. The problem, though, is when is the Lord going to take that spirit from you? You can't take that money with you, right? Read on. Say not, what profit is there of my service? And what good things shall I have hereafter? And a lot of people think like that. They feel like, I've been serving the Lord for a year. How come the Lord isn't giving me this, this, and that? But, the, but that's carnal. That's how the wicked think. You shouldn't be thinking that same way, right? We should be thinking on the, on the on the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We want to get those blessings in the spirit, right? Read on. Ecclesiasticus 11 and 24. Right. Again, say not, I have enough and possess many things. Right. That evil, and, and what evil can come to, come to me hereafter? Because that's how people get when they get rich and they get wealthy. They feel like they got everything they need. Then they forget about the Lord. Then they kick against the Lord. Right? Read on. In the day of prosperity, there is a forgetfulness of affliction. Yeah, man. As soon as you get a little bit of money, you forgot when you was you was only eating one meal a day. You know what I mean? When you was when you was tight and pinching. Read on. That's the last question. In the day of prosperity, there is a forgetfulness of affliction. And the day of, and in the day of affliction, 
There is no remembrance of prosperity. Yeah, man. When you're doing good, you forget when you're doing bad. When you're doing bad, you forget when you were doing good. But through all of this, you need to just, you need to remember the Lord. Don't forget about the Lord, right? That's my time.